Hello students, uh, we are going to do the poem Fire and Ice written by Robert Frost today and I am Juma Chanda Ghosh, I am going to be teaching this poem to you today. The poem as you know is written by Robert Frost who was born on March 26, 1874 and he departed for the heavenly abode on January 29, 1963. He was a renowned American poet but America did not exactly uh, wholeheartedly accept him in his uh, Hey days. In, in fact, when he was just about to start writing. Uh, in fact, that was what um, that pushed him to make this momentous decision of leaving America and going on to uh, going on to England to make a career there where he became a household name and he was um, he received a lot of name, fame and accolades. And then he came back to America and this time America welcomed him with open arms. Uh, he has written the poem Road Not Taken that was a part of our curriculum last year and we also get to know from that poem that uh, you know his poems generally have deeper meanings hidden in layers of words. Now let's speak about the structure of the poem. It's a single nine line stanza which greatly narrows in the last two lines and it's very identical to Dante's Inferno in structure. On the left, you can see a picture of Dante's Inferno, wherein there are nine rings of hell. Each ring represents a particular kind of hell. And uh, similarly, this poem has nine lines. Now, I'll read out the poem for you once. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But... If it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Now the poet contemplates on the ending of the poem first, uh, ending of the world first. Okay, he discusses how he. It seems as if in the first two lines he is discussing how um, uh, what are the people's opinions, general public's opinions about how the world would end. Some say the world would end in fire, some say it would end in ice. So what exactly is the meaning? The meaning is uh, that probably, you know, the poet wants to surmise that, you know, the earth's core would heat up so much it, to the extent that it destabilizes and a massive fire engulfs the earth. It might also mean that the earth's atmosphere would uh, catch hold of the cosmic flares from the sun and, uh, you know, a massive fire would erupt and ultimately burn everything down okay alternately he also discusses the theory as to how the entire world may freeze to death you know this is one theory that we have come across time and again that you know if the raging fires don't kill us the ice most definitely would you know that the earth's temperature would drop to that kind of an extent where everything freezes you might have seen several hollywood movies uh, on the same but yes this is also one of the theories now, you might say that, ma'am, why fire why, and why ice? Okay. Uh, let me come to the next two lines first. It says, from what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Now, what, uh, the poet wants to say that whatever he has understood of desire. Now, what is desire? Desire is a keenness, an eagerness to achieve something, to, uh, um, to have something, be desperate about something. Now, what can be that something? In the, an individual might want to, uh, might be desperate for luxury, for comfort, or maybe just the happiness of his uh, family, which would uh, basically come from uh, earning more money. Uh, he might be uh, desperate, he might be desirous of achieving the pinnacle of success in his work. Uh, he might uh, want to be uh, the best amongst all his peers and that is also a fire that burns him. Fire that burns him. See, it's not only the physical fire that we talk about, like the one that raised in Australia or um, in the American rainforest all these years. We are not talking about that. We are talking of that, of that inner fire which if channelized positively can actually make you climb up the pinnacle of success the ladder of success on the same on the other hand fire is also of jealousy of hatred of avarice greed envy okay these are the kind of fire, fires that consume a person from within that this kind of fire gnaws away at your heart and constantly eats you up from within Okay, now you must have known about the five elements that make up our uh, earth. That's fire, earth, water, air and metal. 
Now the poet has taken fire and ice which is basically a form of water to basically demonstrate the various kinds of destructive emotions that are at play. He basically wants to say that if we do not control our destructive emotions then it's going to be a hazard for all of us not only for our own self because they uh, but for others as well because they are going to compel us to do something that would that might prove dangerous to others as well okay we all know that jealousy greed envy hatred these these are emotions that actually drive us to do something dangerous to others that pose makes us the danger for others okay so, from what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. So, he says that whatever I have understood of desire, I, uh, I am in favor of those people who favor fire. Okay. Favor fire. Alliteration. It is a poetic device wherein uh, the repetition of consonant sounds in adjacent words is seen. Okay. So, favor fire. F sound. First sound is repeated. Fur is a consonant sound. So, it is uh, alliteration. You might say, ma'am, uh, if uh, consonants uh, sound uh, is mandatory for alliteration, what would you call repetition of vowel, vowel sounds? That's called assonance. Okay. A double S O N A N C E. Assonance is repetition of vowel sounds. Alliteration, on the other hand, A double L I T E R A T I O N. Alliteration is uh, repetition of consonant sounds. Now, uh, so, he says that he favors people who favor fire. Okay. But, if it had to perish twice, I think, okay, just, just let me go through the other points as well. Uh, as I was saying, the, this uh, passion, this fire gnaws away. Gnaws away means eats, eats away at the heart of an individual. The fire of passion consumes an, an individual and gives rise to a zeal to climb upwards and reach the summit of success. All this is very positive. But it is only when jealousy comes in, when envy comes in, when greed comes in, that is when it all turns negative. It promotes the feeling of I, me, myself. It encourages ego. It encourages um, self-centric, self-obsessed, selfish behavior. Okay, and this fire also does not allow one to look beyond himself or herself. Okay, but if it had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Now, one is fire, you know, the zeal to do something. What would be the opposite of this situation? Just like fire, just like ice is an antithesis of fire, you know, it's completely opposite to fire. Similarly, indifference, insensitivity, apathy, these are completely opposite to the fire that gnaws at your heart. You know, somebody who is in need, okay, looks at you, asks for something from you and you turn away as if nothing has happened. This apathy this indifference, this insensitivity is the ice that Frost is talking about. Okay. Ice is an equally efficient and effective uh, way to bring about a catastrophic end. Okay. Now, he also brings about this contrast between hatred and ice. You know, you are, you hate somebody so much. I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great. You hate somebody so much that there is this icy cold behavior between you and that other person or thing. Something that is enough for to kill that person. You must have, you must be knowing about this. Jagdish Chandra Bose once famously said that, you know, uh, he probably did an experiment uh, outlining this that uh, if you keep on uh, saying bad things to a particular plant, sooner or later it would wilt. In fact, it would wilt faster than the other plant uh, to whom you have been whispering all good things. Okay, hatred is something that again gnaws away at your heart. It consumes you from within. It completely destroys, uh, des destroys your conscience, your uh, humanity. Okay, so... Uh, he has here in this poem, he has uh, likened jealousy with, uh, sorry, desire with fire and hatred with ice. Uh, 
again i see cold behavior promotes mean minded self centric behavior people only think about their own selves and their own well being and they don't uh, care to hoots about uh, other people something that's very that's very evident in today's scenario with the corona virus uh, where where people very irresponsibly are more venturing around and um, are spreading the virus they themselves don't realize that they are the vectors they they from they probably do not know that they are the carriers and they are simply acting as an instrument as an agent to spread it anyway so knowing the cold hearts of people the poet knows that indifference and hatred together are potentially lethal weapons for inner destruction now uh, so um, to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice that is it is adequate it's sufficient suffice is basically um, the verb for uh, sufficient okay so uh, this is how the poem ends some say the world will end in fire some say in ice from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire but if we had to uh, but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice now let us quickly look at the poetic devices that are there imagery what is imagery imagery is when an image is painted before your eyes involving all your five senses you know the words are such that when you look at it when you read it an image comes in front of you that involves your senses okay it might talk about a smell and you would actually imagine that smell you might even you know uh, get it so uh, in this particular poem the example for imagery is for destruction ice is also great okay uh because see when when you imagine it you can talk, you can think about the vast expanse of uh, of the vast icy expanse of antarctica or the arctic or you know such cold places and uh, you might you, and you would understand when you see only white in front of you and blue water and only ice in front of you you know that these are agents for destruction okay alliteration i have already discussed this repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of adjacently or nearby placed words like favor fire or world will uh, the world will is there in the first line some say the world will end in fire so war sound is getting repeated so this is alliteration next personification personification is we have already discussed this in the class uh, when a non living being is attributed with the qualities of a living being for example um, the the mouse said to the mountain ho oh, ma o oh, mountain why don't you ever budge from your place now you might say ma'am rat is a living being yes but then to our knowledge the rat cannot speak and definitely not in our language in english so the rat uh, has been personified but more importantly the mountain by being addressed he uh, the mountain is expected to answer and thus we have personified the mountain as well okay so when a non living being is attributed is attributed with a living being's quality this is called personification and both fire and ice in this poem have been uh, have been uh, declared as capable of destruction by the poet so both of them have been personified now repetition repetition another word for repetition is anaphora okay a n a p h o r a anaphora anaphora is when um, a particular word or an expression at the start of two or more consecutive lines um, is repeated then um, there is repetition so in the very first two lines we see some say the world will end in fire some say nice so some say some say is getting repeated so this is an example of anaphora in simple language repetition enjambment this is again something that we did uh, quite a lot of times last year remember um, when an idea that originates in a particular line does not end in that particular line but moves on to the next line along with the line of course then it is called enjambment for example uh, from what i have tasted of desire i hold with those who favor fire from what i have tasted of desire the line it's evident that there is something more to come after this right the line has not ended poetry may uh, the line keeps on ending right but then the lines keep on ending but then in this particular line from what i've tasted of desire you know that something is about to come after this now this something is coming in the next line so because the thought goes on to the second line the poetic device is called enjambment you can also call it 
jam j a m b jam that's all for today if you have any questions uh, do write in the email group that we are going to uh, make shortly and we would also be providing you with some worksheets for this thank you very much juma signs off bye bye